Yes, thank you, Mark. I appreciate being asked on the, the show today. And as you mentioned, uh, I held government positions. Right now, I'm currently president and owner of Catalyst Consulting and Development and Paladin Development Group. Catalyst handles a lot of the project management for new village, new cities development, which includes integrating water, sewer, recycled water uh, into a sustainable community. And these are brand new communities. So we have a lot of knowledge of how to, again, integrate sustainability, green technologies, recycling. Paladin focuses on the acquisition of those water systems and moving with wastewater recycled title 22 water back for groundwater recharge specifically in the central valley under the sigma act requires a one-to-one -one groundwater balance recharge for for new development the purpose of the talk and the title today is california doesn't have a water problem and has a storage and distribution we've seen that california has grown a lot we have largest population in the United States. Even though we've got folks moving out now, there's still the allure of California. It's the weather, it's the economy, it's the natural resources. Everyone wants to live the California dream. That was what generally built up the infrastructure post-World War II. You have guys like Mud Helen and LA Water and Power. You had large facilities of Hetchy Hetchy, Orville Dam, all the uh, canals through the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation being developed, uh, you know, post depression era, really utilizing and open up large swaths of land in California. This was accomplished by the federal government, the state looking at the distribution, storage, capture, and retention of water, a most precious natural resource. We can go without food for a while, but we can't go without water. Every major civilization has realized this, particularly the Romans, as they expanded into the frontier from the empire. The first thing they did was build water storage, the aqueducts for distribution, and wastewater removal and disposal. It's the key components to civilization. You've got to drink water and remove your diseased waste from your settlements. California understood this. Again, post-World War II, we built up, we had enough storage with the aqueduct, with the first Governor Brown, you had President Kennedy initiating the, the San Luis Reservoir up near Los Banos, which was to serve the population at the time. As the state grew, population grew, there wasn't an upkeep and, and a continuation of those water storage and distribution facilities. They relied on the old systems hoping they would have enough capacity. Well, we've seen that they haven't. And a lot of my clients and, and students ask, why didn't we do more? We had the time, we had the money. It was the 60s, it was the 70s, 80s during Reagan. Part of that major reason is because both the state of California and the federal government enacted environmental review laws. Those included here in California, CEQA, California Environmental Quality Act, which had to look at things such as endangered species, watersheds, safety issues. So it wasn't as before post-World War II where the Army Corps of Engineers or LA Water and Power went out and built a dam, went out and built the water system, the pipelines, put it into all of our faucets, and it was done quickly and efficiently. With these changes, environmental regulations, you know, and social social policies, these types of facilities and major capital works and public works projects became more expensive, took longer time, 
and we're open to substantial opposition. For example, the Temperance Flat Dam in Fresno, Madera County would triple the size of the current Millerton Reservoir at Fryant Dam by adding an additional reservoir uh, upstream to capture all of the storm flow, the snow runoff. It's been stalled. Congress has allocated funds. It's, it's in lawsuits. It's in environmental uh, opposition. So what I meant when we talked about this, Mark, in terms of the title, and I went through the, the first aspect of it, which is the distribution and storage. We have a deficiency there, but we don't have a water problem. Of course, we have your weather and your cycles that's been happening throughout the course of time. You have wet years, you have dry years, you have longer droughts, you have El Nino years. It, it just is part of the ecology of California. And people ask too, and students say, well, well, how come there's no more water? Well, there is water. There's as much water as it was when the dinosaurs roamed the earth or when the Romans or the Egyptians. The water supply and capacity of molecules has not substantially changed. It's just how we capture them and choose to store them. Right now in California, a majority of the snowfall rain runoff is not captured in the reservoirs. It is let to go out to sea for environmental mitigation. It capturing even a, a small percentage of that, either through reservoirs or strategic groundwater recharge, California can solve, I believe, a, a large majority of their water supply problem. I just mentioned groundwater recharge. Water is also coming from out of the ground. There's underground reservoirs and rivers and large lakes and pools. As farming progressed, as, as cities progress, as urban development in areas without rivers or streams or a conveyance system for canals from the reservoirs, they relied on groundwater. And the ground is, is like a sponge, Mark. Right. If you have a wet sponge, it's nice and thick. But the second you start drying it out, it shrinks. So we have subsidence, particularly in the Central Valley. And over where my last posting was out in western Fresno County, there's a telephone pole that shows how much the land has shrunk uh, out at uh, Three Rocks. And it started back in the 50s, and you can see it you know, going down, going down, going down, going down towards that today, almost a 30 foot reduction of the groundwater or the ground level because you took that water out of the sponge and it depressed. So in order to get groundwater, now you have to go deeper. There's contamination issues, which can be solved through filtration. But that's a localized issue. That, that doesn't solve a full distribution system statewide. We know Northern California is wet, LA is dry. How do we get the distribution? It, it, it's through rivers, it's through pipelines, it's through what we call a, a, a string of pearls, where you use, as the Romans did, the elevations of various hills and valleys you create your storage there fill it up it releases and goes downhill the other aspect of that mark is you create energy you create free energy you know dam energy uh, hydroelectric we went to uh, hoover dam over the the summer and our daughter got to go into the dam and, and see the big turbines and see how those symbiotic relationships work between water, sustainability, and energy creation. So again, California doesn't necessarily have a water problem. It has an infrastructure problem. And that infrastructure problem 
needs to be solved to maintain our population, to grow our economy, to also provide for environmental assurances through restoration when the water is there. And I hope I haven't talked uh, too long, Mark, and pontificated on <laughs> too far down the rabbit hole. So when we first talked, um, I was intrigued by a headline. It was early in the spring, actually, and we had a very, very wet down here in Santa Barbara where mm -hmm. I am. And I remember NBC News saying something like 90% uh, of the water that that rained went out into the ocean. We didn't have a way of capturing it. And it feels like in 2023, we should have figured that out by now. Uh, and I agree. We, we talked about that at some length, and, and we both read the article and, and started discussing it. And all rivers, all streams run to the ocean. Again, it's a matter of having the facilities there to capture that runoff in strategic locations. Or, or as the governor tried to do after the fact with these rains, is to say, okay, we have the streams running, farmers, you can take as much water out of there as necessary, cities, counties, you can divert that water to try to recharge the groundwater aquifer. That did occur, but it was a little bit too late, uh, too little too late because nothing was prepared for well, I mean, did he did he do that by just policy or did money get expended to actually build some infrastructure? See that that's the problem too, Mark, is everything's done by by policy. The government loves to to dictate programs but doesn't allocate funding. So as if you as a farmer or, or a county or a water district, had an outlet or inlet to take that excess water flowing through a creek or a river or a canal, you could dump it onto your property free of charge and call it, no one's going to rhyme, recharge, or groundwater recharge, which is beneficial. But with so little lack of a forewarning of being able to prepare, because some of those areas were in crops. Some of those areas were not necessarily available for a large uh, onslaught of water. So it was very few in between. It was a good policy. And hopefully Department of Water Resources and uh, feds at the USBR Bureau of Reclamation look at how to expand and look to next winter, if it is a wet season, how you could proactively address how to take that excess water. Well, they're already saying it's going to be wetter this winter than it was last. Right. So it's dry right now. In fact, it's 85 degrees here in Santa mm -hmm. Barbara today. Right. Uh, it's November 1st. Um, so you said it was, it was the right thing to do. It was just too late in spring. So is the existing condition enough for this coming winter or should we be doing some stuff now and if we aren't doing it why aren't we doing it so a, a lot of the projects i work on we have recharge basins so explain Those, by the way to, for the people uh, who don't know what's okay. a recharge basin so simplistically is a big hole uh okay. you can right it's a big hole in the ground like a that, reservoir like a reservoir, but at, but at a smaller level for either cities or neighborhoods, and you put your stormwater in there that falls into the gutters, into the drains, it all flows there to recharge. Some of these developers, as well as water districts, canal districts within the Central Valley have been proactive in digging those basins over the summer they did the soils test. They looked at percolation rates. Where's the best place to put it? It's almost like a giant French drain. Is so there isn't did, a there there isn't a concrete bed in it. It's just water, just, and then it's naturally going to seep through. So eventually, it'll just be dry. That'll be dry, 
some of these developers, because out in the Central Valley, there's a Corcoran clay layer, because uh, the valley was an inland sea in prehistory. So they'll they'll dig through that. They'll bore with with wells to get down past that that layer that is almost like concrete, a swimming sure. pool, to get the filtration and the absorption. So in summer, you you have a a dry hole. In winter, you have the ability to fill the hole with water. It percolates and drains into the groundwater basin, and the dirt is a natural filtration device. All the water drains, next storm comes, in theory, if it's not back-to-back -back storms, fills up the basin again. When the basin is dry, of course, you clean it because there's some vegetation. So, so excuse me, does, yeah. so that water that drains, does that fill the aquifer and then we, we get to use the water in other ways? How do we get to yeah. that water? So... What happens is that it takes a long time for the water that's in that basin to filter through the dirt and the sand and the cobble, but it does eventually get into the groundwater aquifer, which is the underground right. groundwater lake. Then the existing wells, whether it be ag wells or wells for your house or ranch or, or city, then suck up that water, which is generally clean, and it's a closed loop system, Mark. It's it's a cycle of life. It's Lion King cycle of life. It rains, seeps into the ground, gets pumped back out again. Same mm. thing. Mm. Okay. It's just you can't over pump. And when you have larger populations that are exhausting the groundwater or large egg operations, for example. One acre of pistachios takes three acre feet of water to irrigate per year. And what's that and number without, for almonds? Almonds is about the same, about two and a half to, to three, depends on the soil's conditions. So an acre foot is simplistically, you take a football field, fill it with water, one foot deep. That's huh. one acre foot. So imagine a football field with three feet of standing water in it. That's what it takes to irrigate almonds, pistachios. Thank you so much for helping us understand this. You're welcome, Mark.